Hey there, and welcome to Hot Shot Trucking with Steve, the ultimate how-to guide. I just called it that because I couldn't find any other guide out there, and so I thought I'd call it the ultimate guide. Really, it's a just an overview uh, for those of you who want to get started in the uh, hot shot business or less than load business using a dually pickup truck with a gooseneck style trailer. Now, I've been doing this for a couple of years. Um, I've had my uh, commercial license for, I don't know, 12, 14 years, something like that. Just kind of had it. I never really used it too much. I used to have some trucks of my own that required the license and... Um, then I uh, got laid off from a tech firm and I got into this business and it's been it's been all right it's had, it has its up and downs like uh, everything else but it's pretty cool so anyway uh, in this video I'm just going to be talking from personal experience and try to give you guys uh, some insight and, and get you started on the right foot we're going to talk about types of trucks just briefly on everything but the types of trucks used types of trailers uh, safety and when I say safety, I'm not talking about securing loads or driving more safely, but um, what's required to get your truck uh, registered as a commercial motor vehicle, the type of license you need to operate these units, uh, insurance, uh, carrier package, which I'm going to show you a carrier package that I use that you're going to need to send to get work. And I'll explain that later. How to book loads. Uh, factoring and what a factoring company is being pro and that sounds pretty general but just some tips and tricks and and my idea of, of how to present yourself in your company when you're working and I'm going to show you at the end some examples of loads that I have done I've got some photos here that you can see some typical loads that you're going to get with your uh, hotshot setup so moving forward These are the typical trucks that we're going to use in North America. We've got three choices, basically Dodge, GMC, and Ford. I personally don't have a preference of one over the other. I think they all make pretty competitive products, and they will do the trick for you. It's going to come down to your personal preferences. Um, I personally use a Dodge 3500 and I've used that for a couple of years with no modifications. It's stock right from the factory and it works just fine. Um, some of you talk about putting chips in them and different sort of kits to get better gas mileage, more power, etc. That's all great if you know what you're doing. Uh, the mechanics that I've talked to have kind of steered me away from doing that, saying that it's better to keep it stock as when problems or if problems arise, uh, it, the the diagnosis is much easier for them uh, dealing with a stock truck. The types of trailers that we use are called gooseneck flatbeds. Now there are other gooseneck style trailers that are enclosed, but for this business you want to go with a flatbed. Uh, going with an enclosed trailer is just not going to work as most of the stuff that we haul is side loaded or loaded by crane. Standard in the industry is 40 feet long. Now that's usually 35 feet of wood decking plus a five foot beaver tail. But in my business, I found that a 30 foot trailer works just fine. One, the trailer's a little bit lighter. Two, it's easier to handle and back up. And three, I usually end up running out of weight before I run out of room. And what I mean by that is because we're using uh, relatively smaller trucks and uh, smaller trailers, there's only so much weight you can put on these things. So unless you're specifically hauling, say, pipe or something all the time, um, if your loads are going to be through brokers, I would go with a shorter trailer because I've always ran out of weight, uh, been limited by weight, I should say, uh, before I've run out of room. I've never had a situation where it's like, man, if we could just put more on this trailer um, because of the length. It's always been, well, I'm out of weight, guys. You can't put any more on this. And a 40-foot trailer is going to be the same. I'm not going to... Actually, with a 40-foot trailer, uh, you're going to be limited by weight a little bit faster because the trailer weighs more. 
The other thing you need to keep in mind, these trailers are not dock height, so make sure you tell anybody who's booking you if they want you to back into a dock and they want to drive a forklift on, it's just not possible. You're going, and, and most brokers know that. They, most flatbeds are not are not dock height. Most of them are, um, are lower because of the type of freight that we carry, such as tractors and things like that. The trailers, like I said, are side-loaded or crane-loaded, and sometimes you get loaded outside by a actual crane or you back into a, a building and um, in the building they have a, a overhead ceiling crane where they uh, hook on to whatever they're they're uh, shipping and that's put on your trailer and then you strap it down inside the building before you drive out uh, the types of configurations are two or three axle configurations we're going to look at some pictures in a sec in a, in a second here and just etc so our next slide, here's your typical uh, gooseneck trailers. You can see here, this is a two axle configuration with two tires on each side. And uh, this is why they call it the gooseneck. You can see that kind of looks like a goose's neck, I guess. And uh, this uh, other trailer here has three axles, single tires. Generally speaking, this, uh, these trailers can hold the same amount of weight. Usually the two axle configuration has a gross rating of 24,000 pounds and the three axle configuration has a gross rating of 21,000 pounds. This can vary though trailer by trailer and different axle manufacturers. So, so don't jump on me guys, I, I know that, but I'm just saying generally speaking, and then the back here, you can see the beaver tail. So these ramps, they actually fold back so you could drive stuff onto the trailer. I just want to point out here that you can see this trailer here, uh, the top uh, blue trailer. That trailer is definitely not 40 feet long, but it can hold the same amount of weight as a 40 foot trailer. Actually more because this trailer weighs less than the 40 foot trailer. So you can put a lot of stuff, you can stack it up high what have you. So if you're, if you're hauling, say, cement bricks, um, you're going to be able to put as many cement bricks on a shorter trailer as you could on a 40-foot trailer because of the weight, not because of the size of the trailer. Obviously, physically, you could put more bricks on a longer trailer, but you'd be breaking the law because your trailer can't handle that much weight, is my point. I hope you guys are understanding my point there. Um, obviously, physically, you can fit more on a 40-foot trailer, but the trailers themselves can only handle so much weight, so you end up running out of, uh, of what you can haul because your your weight limitations. Now, here are the hitches. Uh, standard uh, hitch for these trailers are these ball uh, couplers, I believe we call them, and they come in uh, two different weight ratings, I think uh, 25,000 pounds, and 30,000 pounds. I'd go with a 30,000 pound setup if you could. Just, it's just more safe and, and uh, why not? I don't think it's going to cost much more. Um, they fit into the back of the truck on these rails and usually you can unpin them and take them out and these, these rails stay in. Obviously they're bolted to the, to the truck but the actual ball and the hitch section can come out so you can throw cargo back there. If you're going away on the weekend with the truck, you don't want the the greasy uh, um, hitch in the back, you can you can just take that out. Down here we have a fifth wheel setup where the pin, uh, this pin, it's actually, it looks a little different than this, but this pin is actually on the trailer. It slides into that slot there and, and that's called a fifth wheel connector. Uh, most of these trailers come with these top two type setups, so I would just stick with that. Then you don't have to worry about the thing sliding out on you. I've heard horror stories. But uh, whatever your preference is, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what kind of hitch you go with, just as long as it can pull the weight. Okay, now for the safety inspection. The truck and trailer uh, it needs to be inspected and certified safe. They both need a commercial sticker. So um, these, uh, these safeties are done by certain shops that certify trucks. So you would go to um, your local, you know, Ford dealer. Most of them do it. Tell them, listen, I'm going to be using this truck as a commercial vehicle. I need a commercial safety. 
and they'll inspect the truck and make sure everything is up to par. And if it is, if there's no repairs needed, they'll give you a certificate and a sticker that goes on the truck, usually on the window, and is valid for one year. You're going to have to do the same thing with, with your trailer. Of course, we are commercial vehicle operators, and so we need to complete a safety report each day, follow the hours of operation uh, rules that are outlined by the Department of Transport or whatever jurisdiction that you're in. If you're in Canada, then it's a different uh, governing body, obviously, than the Department of Transportation. So that's pretty standard.